What's up challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo and this is APA Season 5 Week 1 episode of The Locker Room. Uh, the San Francisco Giantes are team building for the Winnipeg Blue Blastoise Seas uh, and their coach, Just Kurt, super nice guy. He has been uh, very, very patient with me uh, because, fun fact, I drafted a Pokemon that requires you to beat Rainbow Team Rocket or Team Rainbow Rocket, and I didn't know that, and that took like two hours, so he's just been waiting patiently, he's got other stuff going on, so thankfully um, he was able to keep himself busy, but I am so thankful uh, for Kurt, uh, and I think he kind of knows now, uh, maybe that maybe that the reason I took so long is because I needed Koopa Unbound, I need to get the Prism Bottle in order to, to transform it. But I'm hoping I, I led him astray because what I told him is, yeah, I just beat uh, Elite Four and I'm uh, just grabbing a couple more points uh, at the Battle Tower and then, I, and then I'm good to go. Hoping that now he thinks the reason I've been taking so long is <laughs> because I needed to be able to Mega Evolve a Mega Medicham. Who's not coming? Here's the here's the six Pokemon I'm bringing this week. It's Appletini, the Victini, Hula, the Hoopa Unbound, Z Drive, the Metagross, Lady Gargar, the Gardevoir, Slowkurt, the Slowking, and Remix, the Ditto. So let's go over these sets, uh, and so you guys can kind of see where my mindset was going into uh, this battle. So on the right side of the screen, uh, right above my head here, you will see the eleven Pokemon that Kurt drafted. That's the Scallopede, the Alolan Persian. Necrozma, Celesteela, Flygon, Talonflame, Porygon Z, Electros, Mega Venusaur, and Hitmonchan. Now, those are not organized by the order in which he drafted them. They're organized kind of in tiers. And what I mean by that is the top row is things that I'm fairly certain he's going to bring. The second tier is mons that I think are very likely that he brings. The third tier is mons that there's not really any reason he wouldn't bring them. And the fourth tier is, uh, I would be very surprised if he brought them. So starting from the bottom, obviously, Mega Venusaur against a Mono Psychic seems like a weird, a weird choice, especially given that several members of the Mono Psychic team, for reasons other than being Psychic, are also pretty good against it. Uh, Metagross pretty good against Mega Venusaur for other reasons, and it just it, it can't handle Victini. So I really I just don't see it coming. By that same logic, Hitmonchan, who is very slow and has very poor defense would probably not do particularly well against my team so I don't think either of them are coming the row above you got Talonflame, Porygon Z, and Electros all of them can be fairly decent mid game breakers or end game sweepers if they really want to be well Electros can't so much but Electros is more of like this neutral bring where you could pack it maybe as an AV, just as a relatively safe answer to any kind of special type Mon. Doesn't have any weaknesses, obviously, so it might work well for him to do something like that if he just wants kind of like this neutral switch into things. Porygon Z has the potential to be just very hard hitting. Might be something that he wants to bring just to kind of break holes in the middle of my team in the mid game. Uh, and Talonflame, of course, the priority Brave Bird could be very useful for it as well. So I know there was a Gale Wings nerf, but it's still a very fast Pokemon, and there's a lot that it can do, especially defensive uh, with Will-O-Wisps and Bulk Upset is very much something that could be brought, it could just go pure Glass Cannon offense. All those things are very possible. Uh, looking at the next tier, Flygon, here's why I think Flygon's coming. Victini is my, like, captain, basically. It's my first pick overall. It is devastatingly powerful, and he doesn't really have a fire resist. It's, uh, it's Talonflame, which, you know, I haven't calced it, but I'm fairly certain just cannot survive a hit, uh, from Victini. So let's just have a look real quick even though it resists it yeah i mean well bolt strike bolt strike will take it out in one hit and priority brave bird does not take out victini so uh, not really a particularly uh opportune choice for him i'm also going to check the impish set just to see if that yeah bolt strike still a two hit ko and he obviously still does even less damage now so there's just that's not an option. Sorry, guys. Mr. Phone is going to need to be silenced now. So just really not an option for him. And so given that, I feel like his best defensive option for me could be like a bulky Flygon 
Or maybe he just opts to go Scarfed on it so that he can try and take me out. Like, because a Scarfed Flygon, for example, yeah, can absolutely do a lot of damage with Earthquake, and V-Create will not take it out in one hit. So, uh, he might opt to go for something like that. A, a Choice Scarfed or, or a Defensive Set, either of which could definitely be a switch in to Victini. And then another option is uh, the Persian Alol- uh, the Alolan Persian. Uh, I'm I'm worried about this mon obviously, but I will get to him in a little while. So let's just keep going through some of the other mon. Celestila, just because it resists psychic and I'm a psychic gym, potentially be a relatively good choice for him. Uh, he thinks to bring can run it like a standard defensive set, uh, maybe a couple of coverage moves on it, but maybe just try and stall me out. And then in the top row, we have Pokemon that I think are really likely to come. Necrozma is one of them because it's got a lot of setup potential, a lot of setup potential. Again, being a psychic gym, it resists psychic, and I don't have amazing amazing options for it but um i do have a lot of like it, i i expect it to trade a lot with with my team so i think it's a, a very likely bring for him uh, it could maybe be on the second row alongside celesteela and flygon because there's not really a reason for him to not like there's a very good reason for him to bring it but the top row the top two for sure are must brings Scallopede because in this league speed passing is actually allowed which is absolutely insane and going to be a real big issue uh, if he if he times it right uh, and then a lowland Persian which just against a psychic gym is just so scary there is a lot that he can do with this Pokemon and it's very very scary so things to discuss when building this team I absolutely needed an answer for Scallopede and for Persian one potential answer for that is Trick Room and so I do have Trick Room on Victini and Victini is running V Create Bolt Strike Power Up Punch and Trick Room with max HP a, uh, a brave nature zero uh, in speed so using this I'm able to out slow so to speak any no invested Vaporeon, Celesteela, and Electra. Sorry, those I outspeed everything but those Pokemon. If those Pokemon come with no speed, they will still outslow me. Uh, but I will outslow everything else. Hitmonchan, Necrozma, Mega Venusaur, Porygon, Flygon, Solipede, uh, Persian, and Talonflame. So the goal here against Appletini is I don't need my speed to outspeed potential threats here. I think I can force switches and get up a trick room. I'm bulky enough as a base 100 with 252 HP investment to take hits. Um, I can absolutely take a hit to get trick room up. I can pop V create to do a lot of damage and lower my speed even more guaranteeing that I outslow things and hopefully just really wreck through his team a little bit. I have, I'm not like a full trick room team. This is more of a self setup. It'd be like the equivalent of clicking agility, for example, with Victini. Uh, and then I also have Hoopa. Uh, Hoopa is Choice Banded, Hyperspace Fury, Zen Headbutt, Thunder Punch, and Drain Punch. It's got great coverage. It's running Jolly Max Speed, and the reason for that is I wanted to outspeed Max Speed Necrozma, whose base speed 79. So I, it was really important to me that I have that on deck, because you never know what the Necrozma is going to be. It could be the Iron Defense Weakness Policy set, uh, but I don't. I will get an attack off before that thing does, uh, and I can absolutely wreck Necrozma with Hyperspace Fury. It's really scary. It's like a. It's a very scary Pokemon. Uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, just running the calcs real quick, we see that the Hyperspace Fury does, yeah, 79 to 93 if it's running max HP, max defense. It's really not going to want to take a Hyperspace Fury. And uh, it could pack Signal Beam, it can pack X Scizor, so it can absolutely uh, do some annoying things to Hoopa but it won't outspeed me in the process unless it gets speed passed by the Scallopede. So obviously I cannot let that happen. Uh, we have Z-Drive as well. Z-Drive is running a very balanced defensive set. Uh, it is Assault Vest, 172 HP, 108 attack, 100 defense, 100 special defense, 28 speed. Uh, the reason for the speed is to make sure that I outspeed, yeah, speed creep potential from Vaporeon, zero speed, Celesteela, right? Yeah. 
Yes, yes. Zero speed, <laughs> zero speed Celesteela, uh, and just be an option for them. Meteor Mash, Bullet Punch, Thunder Punch, and Power Up Punch with the Assault Vest. This will help me to take hits from Porygon Z. This is a good switch into Porygon Z. Will help me take uh, special hits from Vaporeon, uh, making me a decent switch into that. It can take on Celesteela really well because even if Celesteela is pa is running a defensive set with Flamethrower, uh, I will eat those and Thunder Punch. Uh, has the potential to be a two or three hit KO. Absolutely a two hit KO if I opt to go for a power up punch first. So that's absolutely an option for me. Things to think about. Thunder Punch, you'll see a lot of electric coverage on my team. Thunder Punch there, Bolt Strike there. Main reason for that being that Talon Flame is hit by it. Vaporeon is hit by it. The Celesteela is hit by it. All super effective. And those are all relatively decent Pokemon. Did I not put Vaporeon on his list? Three... Six, nine, ten. Yeah, I forgot to put Vaporeon on his Pokemon list here, guys. Vaporeon, there's no reason that he wouldn't bring Vaporeon. He would go in the same tier as Talonflame, Porygon Z, and Electros, I guess. I, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to put it on there. But there's really, there's no reason he wouldn't bring it. It just, it doesn't fit a particular purpose. I actually hope he brings it because that would mean Wish Pass potential from Remix. Remix being an amazing switch into a Vaporeon. So uh, I would actually really like it if he brought that Pokemon. We'll keep moving on though. Lady Gargar, uh, Electrium Z is the item. Trace, Psyshock, Moonblast, Thunderbolt, Calm Mind. This is is an amazing switch in to Persian. Absolutely amazing because I will trace the fur coat if he's electing to run fur coat. If he's not, it's a much less scary Pokemon because it can get one shot by Victini, it can get one shot by Hoopa, uh, but with the fur coat, most of the time I'm not expecting that to be the case. Uh, Persian is a huge problem because if it just opts to run Foul Play set, it can really wreck the Metagross, it can really wreck the Victini. It does not Oko Victini, but again, because of the fur coat, I can't beat him in one hit with V-Create either. And so that leaves me with like the best option being that if I happen to have power up punched before, if I'm behind a trick room or something, I might be able to outspeed and V-Create and get it get a kill then, but it's not gonna be that easy, guys. So I need a switch into it. It's there's a lot it can do, and it can kind of bring every dark type attack that it wants. It can bring uh, knockoff, pursuit, and foul play. I'm assuming it learns all those things. I really haven't. I guess I should check. I'll check right now. On camera, guys. I'm going to do it right here with you. We're doing it together. I mean, I absolutely 100% know that it learns foul play. I know that already. Uh, I'm assuming it learns knockoff. Yes, it learns knockoff. It, yeah, it learns everything. I'm seeing so much dark here, uh, but I'll just verify that it learns Pursuit. <gasps> it does not learn Pursuit? That is amazing news. Okay, I just learned something. <laughs> just learned something today. That makes me feel a lot better because one of my original plan- I'll get to it later. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, Gardevoir is an amazing switch into this thing. By tracing the fur coat, I take very little damage. By being part fairy, I resist his dark typing and Persian just doesn't have the offensive prowess behind it being base attack of 60. It just doesn't have the offensive prowess to threaten even a non-defensive Gardevoir with its moves since it just it doesn't have anything for me. Um, I mean, honestly, Gardevoir, uh, its defenses are only 65, HP only 68, but I'm only weak to Ghost Poison and Steel. Uh, and the... The Persian has a Shadow Claw, base 70 from 60 base attack. I'm not worried about that. Um, as far as Steel, uh, it has Iron Tail, but it's very low accuracy, so I'm not worried about that. And uh, Poison. So what are we rocking? It's got Toxic and Gunk Shot, which, you know, actually... Gunk Shot's a high power move, but I'm just... As far as, like, I don't, I don't think that's coming. I don't think Gunk Shot is going to be on... Uh, on this Pokemon. So it makes it like the safest switch and I can get. And just to kind of put this in perspective, guys, because people, you might not realize just how uh, much the Alolan Persian does not threaten this Pokemon. Um, looking at the bulky pivot set Persian, a foul play against a fur coat, 
Gardevoir with a set that I have does 14 to 17 percent. Uh, I have Electrium on my Mon, so he cannot knock me off, uh, meaning a knockoff will do 12 to 15. So looking at this, honestly, the hardest it can possibly hit me for with Gunk Shot is 30 to 35. So this is an amazing switch into Persian. And it means I get a guaranteed Calm Mind up if I want it. I have Electrium Z so that Celesteela thinking that, hey, I can resist both Psyshock and Moonblast, cannot switch in with Impunity. Um, Celesteela, uh, like a defensive set, which is probably what I expect it to bring. I can hit it with a Thunderbolt and then uh, kill it on the next turn with the Gigavolt Havoc. Uh, actually, another thing is I could probably just relatively safely click Moonblast because there's a really good chance that Gigavolt Havoc takes it out on the next turn anyway. And it's not likely that the Celesteela, if it's running a defensive set, which is the thing it needs to run in order to survive a Moonblast into a Gigavolt Havoc, if that's the case, it just it won't be able to kill me with Heavy Slime anyway. So that's sort of all of the thought process laid out behind the Lady Gargar. It's a huge bring for me. It'll be really important this matchup. So I need to keep it around and keep it safe to deal with the Alolan Persian. Basically, until Alolan, Alolan Persian goes down, I can't lose the Guard of War. Uh, just because everything else is gonna really struggle with it. Remix could potentially be a relatively safe switch into it, but it can't like hurt it. You know what I mean? Like they can't hurt each other that well. Uh, moving on, we have the Slokert, the Sloking. Scald, Psychic, Toxic, Slack Off. I, I played with its second attacking move a lot. Uh, and I played with Toxic being the third move a lot. And the reason I ended up deciding on Toxic is it's it makes me a relatively decent switch into Necrozma. Uh, I am a physically defensive set, and what this will allow me to do is kind of switch in on Necrozma, possibly Toxic it, um, and then Scald Psychic are just my, my other options after that. I have 20 text messages? Come on. Phone blowing up. Slowkurt. What does Slowkurt do? Switch in to anything that just doesn't really have massive offensive potential. Uh, it will handle the Talonflame really well. It is a relatively safe switch into the Flygon. It actually doesn't take that much damage from the Persian either. The Persian could knock it off and I wouldn't really like to lose my leftovers, but I could basically just kind of stall it out, potentially get a burn on it with Scald. He doesn't have amazing Slowking switch ins, like to switch in against me. Like maybe that would be why Electros comes, but if Electros comes, I'm just going to switch out into either Remix. Yeah, probably Remix and just kind of see what he decides to do from there. Uh, chip away at it maybe a little bit. Maybe I just bring in Z Drive or something like that and try and uh, go to town. But yeah, the slow, like he doesn't, he just doesn't have one. Mega Venusaur, um, I have Psychic for it, or I could just switch into Z-Drive. Like I'm not saying it's gonna wreck his team, but it's a safe switch in and I can pivot on it a lot thanks to Regenerator. Second move, like one of the things I was considering was Ice Beam so it could really take out the Flygon, but I imagine Flygon will switch fearing the Ice Beam and I'd like to get a burn on something with Scald. Might uh, bait in Celesteela, which is kind of unfortunate because I can't toxic it, it resists psychic, but it probably doesn't want to get burned and Scald's not going to do no damage to it. So there are options to me. I could just always then switch into Z-Drive right after. So basically anything that slow that would be good against slow Kurt, um, Z-Drive is a relatively safe switch into afterwards. And then Remix is huge because he does have some boosting Pokemon, namely the Scallopede. And Scallopede, just offensively on its own, not even from the Baton Pass options to it, is dangerous. It's very dangerous. But there are a few things. So one idea I had originally was uh, leading with Victini. I'll just kind of talk through this idea because I, I think it's it's interesting. There's a lot of potential to it. If I lead with Victini, he might fear that I'm scarfed and protect on turn one and I might be able to get a trick room up. And if I do that, he, he does that so that he now outspeeds me if that's his lead option. And if I do that, now I'm faster and I can freely V create and will likely take him out. The re things that make me kind of scared of that is that one very likely thing that you might see on the Scallopede is a Focus Sash. And that kind of worries me a little bit. And so one of the other potential things I could do is lead Remix. 
Uh, Remix is also a good lead against, say, the Persian, because I can scout its entire set, see whether or not it's got parting shot or something. I will get a faster parting shot off on it, because it's likely to, we'll, we're likely to just parting shot each other. But I could also check, maybe it has Toxic on it, and I could get a quick Toxic off, uh, unless it baits in the Celesteela. But I think it would, again, I think it would parting shot that. I don't think it would just uh, hard switch. So, uh, so I do have options for how to lead in this game, but I think those are the most likely options, especially if I see Scallopede. Especially if I see Scallopede. I just, I really think he brings either Scallopede or, po or a Lowland Persian, and I think those are very, very likely leads for him. If not, I have relatively safe switch-ins to almost everything else. He could go for turn one setup with Necrozma, but I don't think it's super likely. Uh, so I'm not going to kind of play around that. But even if he did it with Remix and I'd be able to see what his likely setup is and respond appropriately. Because Z-Drive is not an amazing answer to Necrozma if he is uh, an iron defense set, because of course like I'm just going to be hitting him on his defensive side and that kind of makes maybe Slowking a little bit of a better answer or maybe Lady Gargar. But if he's the, say, like a Calm Mind set, then it's an amazing answer for him. If it's a Sword Dance set, again, it's a relatively decent answer for him as is Slowkurt. Basically, when I see Necrozma, I, I, I have to attack it. I, like, I can't give it free turns for setup and that's sort of the same thing with the Scallopede. It's very important almost imperative that I attack it right away. So that's the team, guys. Let me know. I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a mono team, so there's definitely holes in it. Uh, but I think I've got the tools I need to potentially win this game. I need to stay offensive. I need to be prepared to switch into his revenges uh, after I get a kill. Uh, my win, likely win cons are either getting set up and behind Trick Room with Victini, or uh, potentially setting up with Z-Drive and... No, that's going to be a mid-game sweeper. Hula might, if I manage to take out the fast Pokemon, might be able to outspeed some of his slower threats towards the end game and then finish up uh, with things like Hyperspace Fury and all that. And Lady Gargar, if I'm able to um, get behind a couple of Calm Minds, uh, the speed tier of um, Lady Gargar means I outspeed everything except Max Speed, Flygon, Scallopede, Persian, and Talonflame. So it really kind of depends, like, how fast does his team want to uh, be? If he builds, like, a super fast team, then Victini's whole plan of action might just be to get Trick Room up for other people. So we'll kind of see from that. Uh, but that's the team. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you all tomorrow.